Hello everyone, you're welcome to the Quantity Surveying Academy. My name is Ojolu Shaibu and I'm the voice behind every video you've been watching on this channel. If you like what I've been doing on the Quantity Surveying Academy channel, kindly subscribe to our channel if you are here to do so and also smash the like button on this video so that YouTube can continue to recommend these videos to many other students that will find it very, very much helpful. Today I just want to do a short video to explain what the quantity surveying profession is all about because I've seen a lot of students asking these questions. Many students got into um, this particular profession, into the, sorry, they got admission into this particular course without even having an idea about it. Trust me, I know how you feel. I know that you may be panicking, you may be confused. Is this really something that is a goal for me as, uh, let me say, as, as, as a career? Well, the truth about it is I would like to tell you before I go on that uh, I was also in the same situation years back. When I got my admission letter, the first thing I saw, the first thing I looked at, I wanted to confirm if the course I actually applied was the course I was giving. And guess what? I ended up seeing quantity surveying on the admission list. And that was the first time I ever heard about the course called quantity surveying. So who is a quantity surveyor? A quantity surveyor is a building professional who has been equipped with the right knowledge of construction or contract cost. So the QS has to know very much about what to do with financial cash flow at the cost of a particular project. He needs to have the idea or the right knowledge of the particular construction to be carried out. And he also needs to know how to carry out the costing for every expenses that is going to be made at the cost of the project. Now, the next thing is, let me tell you about the duties of the quantity surveyors. The, the, the unfortunate thing in this part of the country, especially in Nigeria and other African countries, is the fact that QS have been reduced to these people that produces just the deal of quantities for a particular project. But there is more to what a quantity surveyor does that is beyond the scope of the deal of quantities. But let me give us a little. Uh, let me let me just give us a little overview of all the du uh, sorry of all the duties of the quantity surveyors. And I would like to start with taking off. Let me start with the bill of quantity, which is the one that is very popular amongst every other person. You know, if you see anybody and the person hears the word the quantity surveyor, the first thing that comes to his mind is the fact that the quantity surveyor does produce the bill of quantities. Yes, we do that. That is our responsibility to produce a particular bill that is a document that gives the entire cost of what the project would be. That is the entire cost that will be needed to complete that particular project. So that is what the bill of fund is all about. A document that gives you the complete cost of your building project and it is prepared by the quantity surveyor irrespective of the kind of project that will be taken. Whether it is a building construction or it is a civil engineering construction, the QS has been invited and given the complete drawing and every necessary specifications or document to prepare a bill of quantities. And in order to do that, you need to have the right knowledge of taking off. So if you're a quantity surveyor watching me this very day and you're still having difficulty in taking off, don't worry, we got you covered in this channel. Just follow everything we do and you'll get to understand it perfectly okay. Because taking off is a prerequisite knowledge that a quantity surveyor needs to be able to function in the aspect of producing bill of quantities. But in case you are actually having a hard time knowing how to take off, don't get yourself too worked up because there are other things you can still do as a quantity surveyor. But please, I beg of you, give in your time into exploring a lot of things about taking off so that you get to know it very well. Moreover, there are a lot of softwares that have been made available these days that QS can explore to help them understand a better way of taking off very, very much fast and effectively. And some of these softwares that I will recommend are softwares like Plan Swift. We have Bluebeam. We have um, we have uh, um, sorry Primavera, and they are very there are plenty. Uh, so there is one that is very expensive. That's Cost X. You can actually go for it. But if you don't have much money and you're still a student starting up, just look for um, Plan Swift. You can download it in getintopc.com. You just search for Plan Swift. It is easy to download, install, and you can start following up different tutorials to learn. How to make use of it and if you cannot if you are not interested in plans you can go for blue beam so these are softwares that will help you as a quantity surveyor to do your takeoff 
But that doesn't mean you don't that, that that doesn't mean if you get used to this software, you don't really need the knowledge of taking off. You actually need the knowledge of taking off to be able to make use of these softwares. So these softwares have not really replaced the act of carrying out taking off. What it did is just to help reduce the number of time and energy that will be spent in carrying out taking off. So it is number one duty of the QA to produce a bill of quantity. And in order to do so, he must have the knowledge of taking off. So if you don't know much about taking off, please. I beg you, take it seriously, research, look for textbooks, and get used to it. Now, another duty of a quantity surveyor is preparing tender documents. He, the QS is, 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 is responsible for providing all the documents, preparing all the documents that are required by contractors that will be tendering for a particular job. Another thing it does is carrying out cost reporting. Now, it is not the duty of the client to go about trying to know how much he has spent already or um, what and what and what he has spent his money on at the cost of a project. So it is the duty of the QS to be able to account for every single expenses that is being made during the project and report back to the client. You can see that reporting to the client all that has been spent is not something that has to do with the bill of quantities. So for those of you that have this misconception that our duty as a QS is to produce bill of quantity, you can see that I'm telling you one different thing that the QS does that is not related to the bill of quantity. And that is giving a report of every expenses and every other every other financial expenses that have been made at the cost of the project. Now another thing that the QS does again is valuation. Whenever it is time for the contractor to get paid, the quantity surveyor is responsible for valuing the work that has been done completely. For instance, or sorry, depending on the kind of contract that the project is being undertaken under. So if the contractor feels like it is time for him to be paid, it is the responsibility of the QS to go down to the site and also assess every work that has been done. Perhaps the contractor may have completed the work for that is may have, may have completed the substructural work. Now the QS, what the QS does is when he values the complete cost of the, the, the substructural work, he is able to certify that the contractor has completed the substructural work. Then he can now write out to the client, notifying the client that yes, the contractor has actually completed this section of this work and he is due to be paid the amount of money that was stated in the condition of contract. And after the QS have certified that this particular aspect of the work has been covered, it is now the responsibility of the um, client to ensure that the contractor gets paid for the work he has done. So the QS does valuation, he value the work that has already been completed by the contractor so that he can be paid effectively. Now we also have procurement. We have procurement, we have estimating. I know a lot of people will be like, what's procurement and stuff like that. The QS does procurement. The QS is responsible for placing orders to suppliers and also nominated subcontractors. So if there are things that are need to be purchased, if there are things that are need to be supplied to the site at the cost of the construction, like your doors, your windows, the roof, you know, you can subcontract the roof, you can also get your doors from nominated subcontractors or suppliers. It is the responsibility of the QS to write to these particular nominated suppliers or nominated subcontractors that have been stated at the um, inception stage of the construction. Now, the next thing is estimating. As much as there are QS that are very good in taking off, there are also QS that have dedicated and specialized themselves in the aspect of estimating. That is, their responsibility is to make sure they calculate the unit rate of each work item that is to be entered into the sorry, that is to be entered in the bill of quantities. So sometimes you may end up seeing QS that will produce an unpriced bill. And when they produce an unpriced bill, the bill of quantity that is unpriced is being handed over to an estimator. The estimator is now responsible for calculating the unit rate, the cost per unit of every work item in that bill, and he would enter the values into the columns for the rate, and at the end of the day, he would be able to produce a price bill. So that is what an estimator does, and this can only be done by a quantity surveyor. So if you are a quantity surveyor, you can also specialize in the act of estimating as much as you can specialize in the act of producing um, your bill of quantity that is in the act of taking off. So you, in fact, I like I said earlier, I said a quantity surveyor is your prerequisite is a must that you should have the, the, the right knowledge of taking off. You need to have that knowledge. So please make sure you learn it as much as possible. Now, the last thing I'm going to be talking about this, um, our duty as a quantity surveyor, there are a lot of duties, but I'm just going to be stopping at this one. The last one is forecasting. Before the beginning of a particular project, you will see that the QS are responsible for 
um, giving an approximate cost of the project to be carried out. And this is done by looking at similar project that has been done in the past and judging by the knowledge of what the cost um, the, the cost was, sorry, yes, judging by the knowledge of the previous um, contract that has been done by the QS, the QS is being able to determine an approximate cost of the recent of the current project that is to be carried out. And he has to also put into consideration the call, the, sorry, the, 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 the inflation rates that may have affected the materials that will be used in the new project. So the QS does forecast. He forecasts, he tells, he foretells and gives an approximate cost of a particular project that is to be carried out. That is the duty of the QS. This is going to help the client prepare to know that he is able to carry out this project so that we don't end up having an abandoned project. And this is very, very, because of the fact that many clients are not making use of QS, especially in Nigeria in, and other African countries, we have a high rate of abandoned projects that are not even completed. Some buildings, you see them at maintenance level, they stop, and for 10, 20 years, nobody is working on it because of there was no prior, um, uh, let me say, um, knowledge that was transferred from the QS to the clients to know whether he is able to embark on this project or not. So that is, these are the duties that the QS does. And another important question that many people have been asking is, do QS need to know mathematics? That is one of the questions. Yes, you should ask yourself, do I need to know mathematics? The truth about it and the, in fact, the absolute answer to this is yes. You've got to have the knowledge of, of mathematics. I'm not talking about mathematics that, that is the abstract aspect of mathematics where you have to be doing the Y, the X. No, <laughs> don't forget about that. Although we did that in school, but we actually passed it anyway, but it was not really necessary. It's not a necessary knowledge in this aspect. I've seen QS moving about with very big calculators on the site and stuff like that. But when it comes to a complicated structure, with um, a complicated structure, you see, you need to have a very a very good technical knowledge in geometry. So you need to know more about geometry. You need to know more about trigonometry because these are the aspects of mathematics that we use a lot. You need to know more about to deal with triangles, different shapes, squares, spares, and the rest of them. Go back to your mathematics textbooks, get those formulas down, store them in your head, store them in your mind because you'll be using them to calculate quantities of different um, work items. I'm telling you this today that the only aspect of mathematics you need is the aspect of geometry and trigonometry. These are the most important aspect. Then you need to just know your plus, minus, your division, and you are good to go. Now, another important question is, is technology replacing quantity surveyor in the 21st century? Well, the truth of the answer is no, absolutely no. In fact, if technology is replacing QS in this particular 21st century, just know that every other job is being replaced by technology. But the thing is, technology is here to help QS step up their game. Like the introduction of different software that have been created, these softwares do a whole lot of things, but it is still dependent on we, the QS, who have to pivot through the softwares. If you go online, you discover that there are lots of tutorials that are showing you things you can do with, the quantity, with, with, with different softwares in the quantity surveying practice. But unfortunately, there is um, a lot of people have not really given an in-depth video about this because there are limited number of QS that are trying to create videos that will explain these stuff. So just know that technology is not replacing the quantity surveying practice, rather it is here to help us. Now, I want to tell you this, a lot of you actually did, may not have applied QS. Many of you, perhaps you just got the admission all of eventually, and then you are not taking it seriously. I want to beg you, please make sure you take this profession seriously. I am also a testimony to how good the profession has been because it has helped me a lot financially. In fact, I was in school, I was already earning, while I was in school, 200 level, I was already earning from producing deal of quantity. Now imagine what I'll make when I graduate. That is what you should also put in mind. That is what you should also tell yourself. One thing I wanted to know is that I did not apply for quantity surveying. 
my dream has always been to become a doctor. I want to be it. I wanted to be a medical doctor right from secondary school. I was studying physiology. I read a lot about anatomy. My friends that are always with me, they know how good I am in the aspect of all those human anatomy and the rest because I studied it when I was in secondary school, even when I know nobody sent me to do so anyway. But the funniest thing was that I discovered I was given admission to quantity surveying when I saw my admission letter. It was the first time I was seeing anything that has to do with quantity surveying. Honestly, I never knew that there was a course like QS. But I am this kind of person that don't like failing. So I took it very seriously. I studied very hard when I was in the polytechnic. And after I after gaining my diploma, I realized that there was something I could do with this course. And then I had to um, apply again to go back to the university and get a BTEC in this course. And now I'm doing so well in the country so then you can tell. Uh, so uh, if you are a student, you 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 haven't really you haven't really taken this course so seriously because Maybe you are telling yourself that after school you will drop the certificate and do something else. I want to advise you, please take it up, take it seriously, because there are a lot of things you can do. If you are not good at one aspect, you can be good at another aspect. And there is more to quantity surveying than what meets the eyes. I want to tell you this today. It is not all about your first class. It is not all about your second class. I'm not discouraging you from getting first class. I myself, I know what I graduated with in my ending. In fact, I, got, I graduated with a first class result when I did my diploma. And currently, I'm still doing so well in school. And I now will be finishing with a very nice result. So if you can make it up to a very good result, please do so. But after your graduation, what matters is the knowledge you have upstairs, is what you are able to offer. Imagine you with your first class results, you got a job offer, which I know you would get. And then when you get to the firm you want to work under, then you are asked to prepare a particular bit of quantity, you are asked to prepare a material schedule, or you are asked to prepare one of these things that you need to do as a QS, and you just end up looking at the person and telling him, I don't know how to do it. You see, it sounds so disappointing. And the good thing is a lot of QS are getting special placement in their NYSC, in the camp. I have a lot of course that told me, wow, that they were placed to so place. In fact, some people requested, and they are not first class students, but yet they got they, they got a very special offer because they are quantity surveyors and because quantity surveyors are limited. So I want you to take this very seriously. It is about what you know, not just about what you graduate with. But remember, what you graduate with is a factor that would help you get into the labor market. Imagine telling somebody I finished with the first class. You see, the person would want to listen to you. The person would want to know, oh, you what can you offer and stuff like that. So it's a plus when you finish with a good result and you know what you you know what you studied. Or if you like finish with an average result and you know what to study is another added advantage. Or finishing with the best result and you don't know anything about what you studied, that is a bit of a problem. Well, seems like I've said too much today. Um, I would just like to round up with this. Please, if you know that you've been having challenges with this taking off, um, um, taking off quantities and stuff like that, there are a lot of textbooks you can go to. And also, we are here to help you. You can just leave us an email or even in the comment section, you can tell us, okay, this is what you have a challenge with. And we'll, we'll list it up in our schedule and see when we can cover that aspect of taking off so that I really want you to graduate and have the best knowledge you can. Another thing you should know as a QS, you need to have the knowledge of building construction. You cannot do without it. So pay attention to every single detail you are studying in building construction. Watch videos, go online, search for a lot of things, learn them, learn a lot of learn, learn about a lot of things. There are a lot of things that you will not be taught in school. Many things you learn them on your own. There are quite a good number of things I'm doing on this channel that I learned on my own. I look for the best way of explaining it to you and it is actually working out. So I beg of you, take this course seriously. If you know you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to our channel because we're producing lots and lots more of other information in more videos to come. So kindly subscribe, like this video, and share it with friends. Please support our channel by joining our membership. It's cheap, it's very, very cheap. Don't go anywhere until you click that join button and join our membership to support us as much as possible. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day. We'll see you in the next video.